On today's episode, I'm going to take you to a set of cliffs that are absolutely stunning. And while I was on Valencia Island, the light looked like it was going to play ball. So let's go on an adventure and I'll show you how you can use your filters to create different types of shots at your coastal photography destination. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome to a place called Fog Her Cliffs, or Fog Her Cliffs, or something along those lines anyway, but it is still on Valencia Island. I'm at the base here of Geocon Mountain, and there's some stunning cliffs that are right behind me here. Now I'm taking a gamble because it looks like there's rain coming in, so I wanna get cracking here and get a couple of shots. I'll give you a look at these cliffs here now, and then I'll take a couple of shots and I'll tell you exactly what we're gonna shoot for today. Now, the cliffs that are here below me are really, really spectacular. And there has been a viewing platform built with a walkway, so it's pretty straightforward. Anybody can have a look and view of these here. Now, as I arrived as well, there's a bit of a rainbow uh, just over my shoulder uh, here. You might have seen it as I was coming in. So it's about to disappear. So I'm trying to get a couple of shots of it here before it's gone, even on my test shots. But the reason I wanted to come down here is because with the waves that are so big, I think I'm gonna get some nice shots. Now, the last time I was here actually was probably four years ago, I'm going to say. Um, a guy called Nev Cartledge, those of you that know him, know he's an absolutely gem of a human being. He came to Ireland and I was lucky enough to be able to hang out with him. And we came here. But when I recorded my video, I had a big issue with my audio. So I had a, a Zoom H1, wasn't connected in properly, and I didn't have any proper audio. So I said, you know what? I'll come back here while I'm here and I'll record a video from here because not only is it a beautiful location but I think with the waves it could be quite good but like I said I'm at a risk because of this rain so I can kind of feel some raindrops um, here hopefully I don't get wet but yeah I'll give you a look at my quick test shot anyway here then I'm going to dial in a couple of shots and then I'll talk you through from there. Right, so setting up my shot here now, I am at 16 mils, so I'm going as wide as I can because I want to still see if I can get a bit of that rainbow into the shot. Uh, I'm at f11, 1 60th of a second, and I'm pointing the camera slightly down because there's not much really for me to see in the sky except for grey clouds, but below me is where all of the texture and everything else is, plus with the movement of the water as well. Now that's a standard exposure I'm going to go for, and a key thing I think is don't always think that you have to do um, a specific type of exposure when you're at the coast you know so normally i go for a half a second or one second but even right now i'm in one sixtieth of a second and the reason for that is you're not going to see much detail in regards to movement of water in fact because this scene is so big and so vast it will actually appear very very small on the uh, frame now like uh, my last episode from last week when i was in the top of geocon mountain all i need is some light now, there is a bit of light because I got that rainbow, but there's not enough light to light up the, um, the cliffs that are below. But these cliffs are extremely impressive. Uh, to give you a look at my um, setup shot anyway here. Now what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to put on some filters and I'm going to go for a longer exposure. Probably go for maybe, I don't know, a five second exposure, 10 second exposure, and then ultimately I'll go for an, an ultra long exposure as well to completely smooth out all the water. But I don't really want to do that because the texture is there within this water as well. So yeah, here's the first shots. I'll give you a look at those. I'll check back in again in a moment.
Now, the first filter that I put on there is my polarizer. And the reason I put on my polarizer is because it will darken down that water. It also gives you a bit of a faster, or sorry, longer exposure. So, still at F11, ISO 100, I can now at 1 30th of a second. And with that shot as well, then, you're able to keep the, um, the texture in the cliffs. You get a bit more in relation to the sky as well, but it definitely darkens down uh, the water there. Rainbow, still faintly there as well. Uh, if that's there, it will kind of show up more colorful as well within the image. So yeah, here's the next shot. That's the first filter, which is the polarizer. I'm gonna move on now next to my three stop, and I'll show you the shot once I get that set up and tell you what the, the, the settings are then at that point. Okay, so now three stops is on, and what that's giving me here is a third of a second. Uh, again, what that allows you to do then is be able to smooth out that water and get a bit more closer to my half a second that I'd normally go from a seascape point of view. But again, like I said from the outset, there's not gonna be much difference in relation to um, the texture within the water because you are so far away. Now, what I'm hopeful for is that, again, as always, I get a bit of light, but right now I don't have any light, but what I do have is a nice layering, but then a dark, dark cloud, as you can see it there on the screen, um, kind of automatically framing uh, the image. So here's the shot now, again, with the polarizer and the three stop, and again, F11, third of a second, and it's at ISO 100. So yeah, here's this shot next. So six stop filter is now on and what that allows me to get is 3.2 seconds and with the 3.2 seconds now you'll get a smoothing out of the water the texture as well within the waves will be a bit more soft but the cliffs obviously being static element will remain sharp so with that as well I'm not changing anything I'm changing the same I'm keeping the same composition still have the polarizer on with my six stop so at least you've got to see what the difference is when you're doing the different types of filters for seascape or seascape or coastal photography so yeah here's the next shot after that I'm going to put on my uh, equivalent 10 stop and I'll talk you through what timing and what settings that gives me then So next filter up is my 10 stop equivalent and what that will give me is over 30 seconds so most cameras um they've got a default setting that you can go up as far as 30 seconds and if you want to go longer than that you have to go into bulb mode but for ease of use here what i've done because i want to show something about bulb mode in a moment i'm going to keep it in the standard settings so instead of it being at f11 i drop it down to f10 and then that allows me to be able to go to my 30 seconds. So I'll probably around about 35 seconds is what it needs at F11. Now, this shot will be very, very smooth, traditional long exposure shot because the water will be smoothed out. Um, key point as well, when you're doing any light type of long exposure, turn off your image stabilization if you have it built into the lens, because what ends up happening is that you get micro movements within that over the period of time, even if there's not wind, or even if you're on a solid ground as well. You're on the tripod, you don't need it, so turn off in the stabilization. That will ensure you get the image sharp and have to worry in relation to micro movements in relation to it. And there's nothing worse than an image being soft after doing all the work that you've done to get that shot. So yeah, here's the 30 second, and then I'm gonna go into spinal tap mode, extreme mode. I'm going to go further than 30 seconds and I'm gonna go for an ultra long exposure. So I'll talk you through what I've done after I show you the shot. Another thing to be very, very conscious of is always make sure that you focus before you apply your filters. Because when you put your filter on, particularly your really dark filters, so your, you know, your 10 stop equivalent, the sensor cannot really see through, so it's very difficult for it to be able to focus. So 
focus first, then go into manual mode, and then you can apply your filters. And if you go into manual mode and you focus on the first shot when you're getting your test shot, then you don't need to worry about focus thereafter because it will be locked in. Nothing is going to move when you uh, half press the shutter button or back button focus or whatever you might use. So keep that in mind, focus first, turn off your image stabilization, and then you can stack your filters to see what type of shots you can get. So yeah, that's a quick tip before I go into this shot here next. Right, so I've just finished that cooking shot here and I got it up it's just over six minutes of an exposure. Now, time has come upon me or the weather has come upon me because as you can see, the entire view here is completely gone. But nonetheless, I think it was just a good uh, example to, be able to show how to stack filters and how you can get different types of exposure times with using your filters. So, thank you very much as always for watching this very quick episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If it's your first time on the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. If you want to watch another episode, I recommend this video here. And until the next time, hopefully I'll have more visibility. Shlongafol.